Welcome to the Mutual Audio Network, where imagination and listening combine. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Now Madison was working super hard on a makeup tutorial show. She was teaching smoky eyes to folks out there. Some freaky deaky science stuff Only understood by nerds Zapped her into old radio shows The kind you might never have heard Now she should probably be trying to get out But Madison, she's having fun Living an old time radio life Our explanation is done Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. Well, mostly true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You think anyone ever listens and are like, Dude, that's totally Carl from work. Come on, there's still some copyright laws we aren't breaking. You're a detective sergeant. Okay. You're assigned to homicide detail. Ooh. An attractive divorcee disappears from her home. Attractive? Like anyone's gonna say, the bitch be ugly. There's no lead to her whereabouts. There's evidence of foul play. Your job, find her. It was Tuesday, June 10th. It was mild in Los Angeles. Mild? So like, sweater weather? We were working the day watch out of homicide detail. My partner's Madison Standish. Hi! The boss is Captain Lorman. My name's Friday. We were on our way out of the office, and it was 11.15 a.m. when we got to 2962 Reservoir Street. You the police? You the nosy neighbor who called in the missing persons report? That's right. I'm Mrs. Harrison. Come on in. I got some coffee on if you'd like a cup while we talk. Oh, MG, I could totally go for a mocha latte right about now. 1954 has a surprising lack of Starbucks. No thanks. We'd like to get started on this. Ugh, Joe, you suck. They didn't find anything when they went into Judy's house, did they? No, ma'am. Wonder if you could tell us what you know about her disappearance. Last time I saw her was Friday the 6th, out in her yard. She was out hanging up clothes. Hanging up clothes? Was her dryer broken or something? We got to talking. You know, about neighborhood stuff. No, seriously. Like, she should call her landlord about that. Did there seem to be anything wrong then? Besides her having to hang up clothes in the backyard? Electricity is a thing now, right? She, um, doesn't have a dryer. Oh, that totally blows. What we mean is, ma'am, did she seem upset about anything? Not that she told me about... We were pretty close. She told me just about everything that happened to her. When her and Alan were still married, we used to get together all the time. Have a barbecue, go to the movies. Have a threesome. That sort of thing. I'm sorry, what? Ignore her. Alan, that's Judy's husband? Yeah, Alan Nelson. Oh, he totally did it. She's divorced, is that correct? Uh Uh-huh, but it's not final yet. It's totes the husband. Was there any trouble between them? Yeah, no, they're divorcing because they get along so good. There are amicable divorces. Tell that to the Kardashians. Mrs. Harrison, did they have any arguments? Any disagreements? Off and on. Alan wanted to get back together again, but he works down in San Diego, so he's not home much. Did Mrs. Nelson have any men friends? Well, she's a handsome woman. When I hear handsome woman, am I the only one who thinks the woman is like manly looking like not bad looking but maybe she's got like a squared off jaw or something just me she does have a lot of men friends nailed it husband did mrs nelson see any one person more than the others david lansing they used to go out quite a bit i think david wanted to marry her as soon as the divorce was final all right so it's the husband can we go get coffee now Ooh, or maybe lunch It's not too early for an Iswa salad, is it? Have you seen this David Lansing around lately? Not since Judy disappeared. If you ask me, 
I think he had something to do with Judy being gone. What? Why? They were always fighting. I could hear them all the way over here. Ooh, what's the tea? Excuse me? What'd they argue about? David wanted to marry her, but she wouldn't until the divorce was final. Lansing didn't like that, huh? He didn't like it one bit. Like it or not, doesn't she need to be divorced first? Bigamy laws? Anyone? No? He was pretty sore about her still living in Alan's house, even if he was in San Diego. Did any of these arguments ever get serious? If you mean, did he hit her? No. Though, I've seen him so mad, I thought he was going to do it. About ten days ago, I was over there. My TV was on the blank, and I went over to see one of my favorite programs. God, life before on demand. It's positively primitive. David was there, and in no time, they were yelling and screaming. Kind of made me embarrassed. Did you have to bring a jello mold when you went over? I mean, that's a thing in the 50s, right? Then what happened? That's when he said it. Ooh, what'd he say? Said for Judy to get rid of Alan, or David would get rid of her. We continued to question the Harrison woman about Mrs. Nelson. Well, you did. I had to use the bathroom. Thankfully, they had toilet paper in 1954. I mean, seriously, you never know. Madison and I left and went next door. We checked through the Nelson house. It was exactly the way the two uniformed officers had found it that morning. None of the furniture seemed to be disturbed. There was no sign of a struggle. On the dining room table, there was a setting for two people. Silverware, napkins, and glasses were ready to be used. On the plates themselves was a complete meal. None of the food had been touched. Well, no wonder. The food was, give me some fat with a side of grease. You sure she didn't just die from a heart attack? We looked for Mrs. Nelson's luggage. There was no way of being sure, but apparently none of her things had been taken. We went through the house and out into the backyard. There was no sign of anything wrong there either. Yeah, except for clothes hanging from a rope. Seriously, back then did everybody just wave their fruit of the looms around like flags for the whole neighborhood to see? You really need to get over it. I will not. We decided to check out the garage. Trunk there. Better take a look. No way. Looks like stains of some kind. Ew! It's wrapped up. Labels, rope. Like they were going to mail it. You have anything to cut a rope with? Oh, sure. Let me get my rope cutters out of my purse. Hmm. Strong knots but I think I got them. Here, give me a hand with the lock. Hard pass. You're not going to help? You're just going to stand there. You know there's a dead body in the trunk. There's always a dead body in the trunk. I do not need to see the dead body in the trunk. Fine. I got it. Hmm. What? What's in there? Is it a dead body? See for yourself. Joe, you dick! Now we know where she is. I'm so gonna puke. Let's figure out who put her there. A crew from the crime lab was called and they came out to go over the house and garage. Great, you're monologuing again. A check of the labels on the trunk indicated the trunk was addressed to a David Lansing on Rowena Avenue in Glendale. While the men from the crime lab continued their investigation... Madison and I drove to Glendale to see Lansing. What am I supposed to do while you move the plot along? We found out from headquarters that Lansing had an arrest record listing several drunk charges and two major fights. I really wish I had my iPhone. Lansing wasn't home, so we talked to his landlady, but she told us she hadn't seen him in several days. We checked his room and questioned her about his car. She told us where he was employed as well as the name and business address of Lansing's roommate. Don't you find it at all creepy that the landlady knows that much about the guy? I mean, seriously, if my landlord knew that much about me, I'd be getting a restraining order. Lansing's place of employment reported that he hadn't been to work in several days. We drove over to see the roommate. He worked in a large television store on Pico Boulevard. We still haven't eaten lunch. It's got to be like three o'clock by now. You could have had something back at headquarters. No, I couldn't. There was literally nothing but donuts. Apparently you were where that stereotype started. Nothing wrong with donuts. Is there something I can do for you? I'd like to see Mark Gilson. 
I'm Mark Gilson. Police officers, Mr. Gilson, on Friday. This is my partner, Madison Standish. Do you guys have a vending machine or something? I'd like to ask you a couple questions about David Lansing. Dave in trouble again? A leftover turkey sandwich in the back, maybe? You know where he is? No, I haven't seen him for a couple of days. I'd even go for some boneless chicken wings from Applebee's. Which, spoiler alert, are just chicken nuggets and buffalo sauce. Madison, do you want to go wait in the car? No. Apparently the LAPD couldn't spring for cars with AC. Mr. Gilson, do you have any idea where we can find him? Uh, can I ask what this is about? He might have killed the married woman he's been diddling. We'd prefer to talk to Lansing about it. He asked. When was the last time you saw him? Friday night. He was pretty bugged about Judy. You know Judy Nelson? Never met her. Dave was all the time talking about how we were going to get together some night and have dinner. Never got around to it, though. I know the feeling. Here's the keys. If that tank of yours had power steering, I'd be out of here right now. What did he say about Judy when you saw him last? The way Dave put it, they'd gotten into a beef about her husband Friday. It got pretty mean. Ooh, really? Spill? Yeah, uh, David had been drinking. He doesn't take to booze too good. Oh, I totes understand. Too many shots of tequila for me and... Go on, Mr. Gilson. I told him to take it easy. He said for me not to worry, said he had decided something. I figured it was about Judy. Uh-huh. Funny thing about Dave... It takes him a while to make up his mind what to do, but once he decides, there isn't anything that can stop him. Not always. Huh? Looks like he missed this time. Madison and I went back to the office. After we stopped for some food. Which took forever, by the way, because hello, there isn't any fast food yet. Not even McDonald's. It's like some sort of alternate universe where everybody has to wait for stuff. We put out a local broadcast and an APB on David Lansing, along with the information on his automobile. We made arrangements for a stakeout to be placed on his home. Which thankfully wasn't us. I could not spend another five minutes in the car with Joe. Let's just say he's super possessive of anybody who wants to play with the two-way radio. Madison and I went back to the crime lab and met with Lieutenant Lee Jones. He went over the physical evidence found at the murder scene. The trunk itself had been checked over, as well as the ropes it had been tied up with, and the mailing label. The rope was of a common variety that could be purchased anywhere. The knots, however, were of a type generally used by seamen (laughs) to secure heavy articles. (laughs) What? I'm sorry. That was not cool. Go on. We made arrangements to obtain samples of Lansing's handwriting for comparison with the writing on the label. The next morning, Madison and I met with Captain Lorman and went over what we had. It was decided that David Lansing was the prime suspect. Prime suspect? Are we still focusing on the boyfriend? I'm not saying he doesn't sound like a total douche, but Dave was getting some, right? It's the husband she wasn't putting out for. Why would the guy getting laid kill her? It's logic. After we left the city hall, we started checking on Lansing's friends and acquaintances. The first one we talked to was a Miss Beatrice Fredericks. Madison insisted on leading the line of questioning. Damn straight I did, since you pretty much already decided that that David guy did it. No, I did not. Prime suspect just means... Shh! No more talking. Hey, Beatrice. Sup? What you know about Dave? Honey, he's a bum. Totally got that. Major skis vibe. You think he could kill somebody? Why don't we focus on the facts, rather than guesswork? Oh, right. Just the facts, ma'am. I've never actually said that. Really? Google it. Wait, what'd you say? Miss Fredericks, how long have you known David Lansing? About ten years. We went together. What's this about killing somebody? Oop, sorry. Spoiler alert. (laughs) When'd you see him last? I thought I was leading the questioning. Go ahead. Thank you. So, Miss Fredericks, what zodiac sign are you? How is that relevant? Of course you'd ask that. You're such a Leo. Please, Miss Fredericks, when did you last see David Lansing? I guess it was Saturday. Yeah, Saturday night. He came in the bar where I work as a hostess. We talked. I was a hostess at Applebee's. God, I hated all of that standing. Oh, don't I know it, honey. Any chance I get to take a load off. My dogs are always barking. What did you and Lansing talk about? 
Oh, the old days. I'm not going to give you a line. I carried a torch for the mook. I was set to get hitched. Everything was duck soup until he met this Nelson broad. You talk so old-timey. I have no idea what you said, but it's adorbs. He say anything about Mrs. Nelson Saturday night? Honey, he don't talk about much else. All the time, it's what she said, what she did, all the time that way. But what he say Saturday night about Judy? I totally killed her, or I totally would never kill her. So you're saying Judy's dead? And stuffed in a trunk. It was mega ratchet. Miss Fredericks, we'd just like an idea of Lansing's state of mind when you spoke to him on Saturday. He was upset. They'd been fighting, but he's like that. He spends all his time with her tying him up in knots, and then you know who he goes to when he got problems? I wouldn't know, ma'am. Me, that's who. Ooh, I knew a guy like that in college. Think he's a real big man, all the time with the chicks. Yeah, and you think he likes you, so you stay up all night doing the entire English project by yourself, and then he goes to the Pi Kappa Alpha party with your roommate. I hear that. I tell you what, as soon as he gets back, I'm gonna tell him to leave me alone. Get back. You know where he is? When he come see me Saturday, he said he was broke and needed to borrow some cash because he was going to leave town. I think he said Frisco. Not our prime suspect, huh? Shut up. We went back to the office and got in touch with the authorities in San Francisco and asked them to check on the suspect for us. We put in a call to the coroner's office. The body had been posted and the time of death was set at some time Friday night. Two days passed. Saturday, June 14th, Madison and I checked in to work. I can't believe we got to work on a Saturday. After I got fired from Applebee's, I swore I'd never work another Saturday again. Fired, huh? Surprising. Bite me. You're 35 and you live with your mom. You're 26 and live with your mom. Socioeconomic hard times. Keep telling yourself that. Homicide, Friday. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. When'd you get him? Yeah. Okay, we'll be right over. Come on, we gotta get over to the main jail. They got Lansing. Stuff is expensive. Do you know how much it costs just to have my phone? And they want you to pay rent every single month. Things are tough all over. It's not like anybody gets paid to do podcasts. Here, read this under the transition music. I get to do the monologue? Go for it. David Lansing was picked up this morning and booked in violation of Section 4127A of the... uh, Who cares? Keep reading. (laughs) Okay, so Dave was picked up totally wasted. Brought to the jail, figured out who he was, blah, blah, blah. Checked out his handwriting to compare with the trunk's label... Are we still thinking he was mailing his dead girlfriend to himself? Seriously? That was a better option than just throwing the trunk in the back of his car? Come on, small cars in the 1950s make a Chevy Suburban look like a compact. When you do the monologues, try not to editorialize. I'll finish. Madison and I took the suspect to the interrogation room for questioning. He was fairly sober, but complained of a bad headache. Madison went down the hall and brought back some hot coffee. Still no mocha lattes. We told Lansing of Judy Nelson's death. Didn't seem to make much of a difference to him. That's hot. Don't piss me off. I'm the only one who doesn't think you're the primary suspect. Primary suspect? For what? All right, Lansing, you want to tell us why you did it? What'd I do? He thinks you killed Judy Nelson. I'd like to help you out. Only one problem. I didn't do it. Evidence doesn't point that way. Well, the limited amount of circumstantial evidence could be Dave here, or, stick with me, it could be the husband who we haven't even brought in yet for questioning. Yeah, what she said. Look, we're supposed to be a united front on this. Then maybe you should have just once listened to my opinion. Maybe if you hadn't reached that opinion within two minutes of interviewing the neighbor, but instead formed your conclusion after an exhaustive search for actual evidence... Actual evidence? We talked to a nosy neighbor, a disgruntled roommate, and a super pissed off ex-girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend? Beatrice, don't go back to that well. 
she's totally dried up, you know what I mean? Look, Lansing, were you ever in the service? Merchant Marines? Did any sea duty? What do you mean? You know, a seaman. That's enough! So, what is it, Lansing? Not me. I get seasick in the shower. Yeah? Note for you, Friday. Thanks. What is it? What's it say? Madison, will you step into the hall? Lansing, we'll be right back. What is it? Read this. Ha! Lansing's handwriting doesn't match the label on the trunk. I knew it! I'm sorry, Joe. What was that? What were you about to say? Looks like we might have the wrong man. Which means, Madison, you were right. You were right about it not being Lansing. But we still have no evidence that it was the husband. Let's find out what Lansing knows about Judy's last night alive. Oh, I got this. Madison. You owe me. <clears throat> we continued to question the no longer prime suspect, David Lansing. He said he'd gone over to Judy's place at 7.30 that Friday night. Why'd you go to Mrs. Nelson's house that night? I wanted to try to talk some sense into her. I loved her. I wanted to marry her, but all the time this ex-husband... Who wasn't really an ex because they were still legally married. Well, yeah. He kept hanging around trying to get her to stay with him, so I went over to talk to her. Then what happened? I didn't call before I went over. That made her pretty mad. I'd be mad too if some guy just showed up at my place without letting me know he was coming first. Of course, I also don't like it when people call me unless they text me first to say they're going to call me. What? It's a thing. So I asked her what was wrong. She never acted like that before. Then she tells me Alan is coming up from San Diego. So the husband was in town that Friday night. Told you, told you, told you. Try to keep it together, Madison. This isn't a schoolyard. What else did Mrs. Nelson say? She said I couldn't stay long because Alan was coming up for dinner. She was cooking for him. The uneaten dinner on the table! Madison. Sorry, keep going. So I told her I wanted to marry her and I didn't want her to string me along anymore. I want her to make a decision. What'd she say to that? She said she had a way everything was going to work out. Said she'd let me know Saturday morning. And she told me she didn't want me there when Alan got there, so I left. About what time was that? I don't know, close to 8, I guess. And you didn't hear from her Saturday morning, did you? We've established her time of death was Friday night, so no, he didn't hear from her Saturday morning. Yeah, duh. So what did you do when you didn't hear from her? Let me guess. You went to her house. No one was home. So you got drunk with Beatrice and left town without telling your roommate or your work because you were desperately trying to find Judy, right? Well, not entirely. I mean, when I didn't hear from her and saw she wasn't home, I thought maybe Alan had talked her into going to San Diego. So you went to look for her in San Diego? No, I got drunk for three days. You didn't try to look for her? This isn't a soap opera. Clearly. What do you know about her husband? Not much. He worked in San Diego. Yeah, we know that. I think he did something with photography... Sold cameras, maybe? I don't know. I only met him once. Mrs. Nelson ever tell you anything about his background? He liked San Diego because he used to work on a boat. Oh, oh, on a boat! Seaman! Yeah, I think he was a merchant marine for a while. That gonna make a difference? It will to you. Why's that? Now we only have to book you for being drunk. <laughs> okay, that was a good one, Joe. We got in touch with Sergeant Tony McGuire in San Diego and asked him to check on the victim's husband. Madison and I met with the chief of detectives and Captain Lorman. We laid out the information we'd been able to come up with, and they agreed we should take a drive to the Southland City. Road trip! And talk to Alan Nelson. It was night by the time we arrived. From the way he looked, he'd been in bed when we rang the bell. Yeah? Police officers, Mr. Nelson. May we come in? Uh, sure, I guess. OMG, this room smells like fish and feet. What do you want? I'd like to ask you a few questions. Couldn't have waited till morning? I think it could have. Then we wouldn't have to see him in his casually opened robe. Ugh. 
When was the last time you saw your wife? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago. Bring it down to a day. Why? You lay it out any way you want to, mister. We asked it simple. You can give us the same kind of answer. Damn, Joe. Getting all tough guy. Can it, Madison. Well, Nelson? Hey, I, I know my rights. You guys ain't from San Diego. You got no right asking me nothing. Oh, yeah? You want to take a ride downtown? We can ask the same questions just as easily at San Diego Police Headquarters. Right, Joe? Madison. Bad cop, bad cop? No? No. When'd you see your wife last? I don't know. Uh, once in a while. Not too often. We're getting divorced. The way we got it, you were trying to get her to call off the divorce. You've been listening to a lot of people with big mouths. All right, Alan. Get your clothes on. Thank you. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Uh, what do you want to know? Where were you Friday night? I was home all night. Uh, didn't feel too good, so I was here all night. Oh, please. In high school, I used to sneak off to parties all the time and came up with way better excuses than that. Can anybody back up your story? Well, no. Okay, rookie mistake right there. Name someone your parents don't know so they can't call them to verify where you were. Are you actually telling our prime suspect the best way to create a false alibi? He's obviously too stupid to do it for himself. I need an alibi? For what? All right, Nelson, we'll lay it out for you. Your wife's dead. What? Uh, when did it happen? Friday night. That's why you need an alibi for Friday night. Ugh. Can we just take him in for being stupid? And you think I had something to do with it? Everything we've got points that way. Why would I want to kill her? I mean, uh, what reason would I have? She's screwing David Lansing, for starters. This is a joke. He doesn't joke. Watch this. Hey, Joe. Knock, knock. All the evidence we've got points to you killing your wife. See? You mean that you've really got a case you can take to court? It's mostly circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence that strongly infers guilt upon the primary suspect. But there's no witnesses. And DNA testing isn't even a thing yet, so... Madison, would you like to step outside and explore the crime element in San Diego after dark? I was just making a point. Okay, okay. I saw her Friday night. She said she'd have dinner with me. I said we had some stuff to talk about. I thought she was finally through with that Lansing guy and was coming back to me. Go on. I would have done anything in the world she asked me to do if she would have just taken me back. Too little too late. I went out in the kitchen with her. Uh, we talked while she put stuff on the plates. Then she just blurted out she was going to marry Lansing. Oh, that sucks. I tried to talk her out of it. She wouldn't listen. She just kept telling me to sit down and eat my dinner. Just kept telling me that. Eat my dinner. I just couldn't take it anymore. So you totally killed her? Yeah! I mean, what choice did I have? Totally not killing her. Why'd you put Lansing's name on the trunk? Well, I figured if I sent it to his place, he'd get blamed for it. And that almost happened if it wasn't for a spunky female police officer named Madison Standish. Get your things. You gonna take me back to Los Angeles? Shotgun! What? Where? N no, I, I meant I get shotgun in the car. Passenger seat. God, Joe, chill. I loved her. You gotta believe me. It's important everyone believes me. One thing, mister. Yeah? Maybe you can convince us, but you won't ever be able to convince Judy Nelson. On November 18th, trial was held in Department 97 Superior Court of the State of California in and for the County of Los Angeles. Here, let me sum it up. Alan Nelson was tried and convicted of murder in the second degree. I guess because it wasn't premeditated or anything like that. And got sent to prison for a period of five years to life. Five years? Like you could kill your wife and stuff her in a trunk and you only go to prison for five years? That's some kind of messed up. Dragnet first aired as a radio series in 1949 in response to the popular noir and detective dramas of the time. Jack Webb, the creator and voice of Sergeant Joe Friday, wanted to bring authenticity to police work, describing the series as so real you could smell the coffee. You know, I still never got my mocha latte. Dragnet continued on to several incarnations in television and film and is considered the precursor to modern police dramas such as Law & Order. Before the announcer dude reads the credits, I want to thank you guys so much for listening. 
I'd really appreciate it if you left a review. And hey, tell me which are your favorite old-time radio shows, and I'll use your suggestions for future episodes. Madison on the Air is listener-supported. For just $3, you can buy me a mocha latte through Kofi.com. That's ko-fi.com forward slash M-O-T-A. And for more information about the show and the cast, visit our website at madisonontheair.com. Thanks! Madison on the Air was written and produced by Chrissy Talon Sage with music composition and audio engineering by Jeremy Sage. The roles of Madison Standish and Beatrice were played by Chrissy Talon Sage. Tom O'Connor appeared as Joe Friday. Other actors in the cast were Jeremy Sage as Mark and Alan, Steve John as David, and Alexandra Bartley as Fern. I've been your announcer, Brian Peacock. This is Jack Ward, and from every one of us here at the Mutual Audio Network, we wish you, your family, and all your friends safe harbor during these difficult times. Please follow the scientific and medical experts' advice, and we'll always be here for you daily at Mutual.